Hello and welcome. Okay, I'm too loud, sorry for that. At least you're awake. Um, welcome to the next talk at EMF Camp. And with me on stage um, is Matthew to talk to you about our latest and best hope for secure federated communication. Please give a warm round of applause to Matthew. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Wonderful. Perfect. Brilliant. Um, thank you for coming along to hear a little bit about Matrix. Um, I guess before I get um, too deep into it, I should probably find out who knows what Matrix is already and who doesn't. Show of hands for people who already are one with Matrix. Actually, not that many people. About, okay, about 10, 11 people. So um, I'm afraid the next bit's going to be really boring for you um, in that we'll have to go over some of the basics um, to bring everybody else up to speed. Um, first of all, I'm Matthew. I'm the tech founder of uh, Matrix. Um, we started doing this about four years ago um, to build a whole new decentralized communications network um, for the internet. Um, the idea to be end-to-end -end encrypted and completely decentralized so that no single power can have any authority over the network. So if you're talking to somebody using a different system on a different server, the conversation is completely replicated over those two servers. And this is the important thing that everybody needs to understand about Matrix, that IRC or XMPP or SIP or whatever has no, not done, um, that Matrix is basically very similar to Git. It is an entirely decentralized system, and if um, I fire up a server on my Raspberry Pi and start talking to other people, even if it might be, I don't know, AT&T or a government or something, the copy of the conversations on my little node are mine and the data is replicated with cryptographic integrity over the other servers, so there is no single point of control at all. So, I mean, that's basically the spoiler uh, main headline here of how we are liberating communication and giving power of it back to the people. So, in practice, um, Matrix is an open network, and we're doing secure, decentralized, real-time comms, and that's for any kind of communication. Um, the typical thing we waste all our life doing is um, instant messaging, interoperable chat, um, but one can also use it for VoIP. Um, you can use it for VR and AR communication. You could use it for um, world data and geometry and VR and AR. Um, you can use it for IoT, similar to the previous talk, if you wanted to have a completely open um, fabric which you can publish and subscribe to real-time any old data. And in fact, one of the um, early demos we did with Matrix was to hook up a car and its ODB2 port into Matrix, have it rattle around the network, and then do visualizations in a totally different system built on top of it. Um, so why are we doing this? Well, it's a bit of a crazy moonshot to build a global decentralized encrypted comms network, which is really as ambitious as the web, except optimized for real-time communication. Because the web was always meant to be read-write. It was always meant to be as easy to publish as to consume. And it all went a bit wrong back in the web 1.0 days. And nowadays, it's still pretty wrong. And if I want to publish stuff on the web, I have many different ways of doing it, whether it's Facebook or FTP or Twitter or Mastodon, but um, there is no kind of common language um, other than possibly DAV, and DAV failed um, to go and publish data out there. So with Matrix, we just want to say, hey, I've got a little bit of JSON data. I want to publish it to somebody else in real time. Here is a simple HTTP API that is standardized for doing that. I guess Activity Pub and Activity Stream have come along um, in the last couple of years in a similar um, space but um, we were coming at it um, uh, almost from a simpler, uh, well, I'll show you the APIs. You can judge how, how complicated it is. By the way, if anyone has any questions or thoughts, please just interrupt, because it'll be a lot more interesting than me just going blah, 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 blah for the next half an hour. Also, if anybody wants to steer things in a particular direction, like, what about spam? Or what about encryption? Or what about VR? Then again, just yell it out, and we can um, steer the talk as you might w wish or not. I mean, practically speaking, Matrix looks like this, or doesn't look like this more accurately, because this is where we are um, today. With all of these um, kind of silos, like Slack or Telegram, Gitter, an IRC network, or even an application like GitHub. And the point of Matrix is to be a glue that um, connects them all together. 
a decentralized network of servers connected in a full mesh topology today at least. And you have these blue bridges which take you through to other systems. You have native clients living on the matrix side. And so it, you, know, you can use it um, in a bridging model so that somebody on free node can go and talk through to somebody on a given Slack by bridging it through matrix. Or alternatively, you can just ignore the outside and have a native matrix client like Riot um, talking to, I know, another native matrix client, say like Seaglass, sitting on another server. But the unusual thing here is, as I said earlier, that the conversations are replicated over all of the servers. So um, there isn't any single server that can go down and take out the conversation. There, is any, there isn't a single server which acts as a single point of failure. Instead, um, it's just like cloning a Git repository over all of the different nodes on the network. Make sense? Yeah, perfect. So just to ram it down again, no single party owns the convos. They're shared over everybody. Some people are probably saying, ah, how is this different to XMPP? Why have you reinvented XMPP? You're a horrible person. You're going to hell. Anybody thinking that? No? Well, one person is wondering why we're reinventing, <laughs> vaguely wondering why uh, we might have reinvented XMPP. And the answer, from my perspective, is that we haven't. They're completely different philosophers and architectures. In XMPP, it is a strictly federated um, protocol um, based around routing blobs of XML over a network, and it does a very good job of it, whereas Matrix, our primary building block, is conversation history. It's not messages. We're synchronizing the history of chat rooms or whatever the data is across these servers. So if anything, it's more like CouchDB or Cassandra or one of these eventually consistent object databases. The fact that you can do pub sub with it is obviously fundamental, but in the end, or, or it's a lot more like Git, that we're going and replicating the history around the place. Group conversation is the first class citizen. You do not get one-to-one -one messages in Matrix. You get rooms. Now, if a room has two people in it, then you call it a one-to-one -one conversation. But there is no distinction between a DM and a PM or a group conversation otherwise at the protocol level. Also, end-to-end -end encryption uh, we designed from the outset. It took us a few years to implement it, and technically it's still in late beta now, but it's still there as a kind of fundamental assumption that sometime real soon now we will turn it on compulsorily for all private communication on Matrix. Um, also, we use HTTP and JSON as the baseline API. You can use other transports too. If you're allergic to HTTP and you hate JSON, you do not have to use it in Matrix. However, the lowest common denominator, stupid, simple thing that we provide is a web API so that to send a message is an HTTP put, and to receive a message is an HTTP get. And that's it. Now, it's inefficient, but anybody can do it. You can literally send messages and receive messages using curl. Um, and finally, our big difference to XMPP is that we're all about defragmentation and bridging. Um, we're not trying to build another ivory tower or another sort of castle in the sky, which is going to be the one true communication network. Instead, we're completely pragmatic and just try to bridge to everybody else, provide some glue in between them, and try to defragment the silos which exist today. Now, I'm not going to bang on too much about the problems inherent in siloed communication because I'm assuming I'm preaching to the choir and everybody agrees that it's a pretty bad thing that uh, humanity has become helplessly dependent on Facebook and WhatsApp and Twitter as their ways of communicating. So let's just take it as a given, perhaps, that um, uh, it isn't a good idea to empower people to control their own communication, pick their communication provider, be able to migrate between their communication providers, and have a completely open standard, open source, non-proprietary, um, non-encumbered model um, for doing so. I don't know, did anybody see the thing about better Slack um, a few days ago? One person, two, three, four. OK, so some guy went and wrote a browser extension um, to make Slack suck less. And he called it better Slack. And um, I forget the features, but they were pretty cute. And he had to reverse engineer the minified um, Slack source code in order to do fun stuff with it. And he announced it on Hacker News, and it got like 800 upvotes, and everybody thought it was the best thing ever. And two days later, Slack legal <coughs> go and shut him down completely um, for daring to reverse engineer their code and undermine the integrity of their products, and blah, 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 blah. 
I'm happy to say that he's now looking at matrix and riot, but it was this classic example of the problems of working on a proprietary system where they suddenly enforce their terms and conditions on you and you're screwed. Even if you've done something really useful and really nice, I, I kind of wish he'd been building on an open source platform and an open standard in the first place, and now he is. So, architecturally, on matrix, you get home servers. These guys feel and look a little bit like email servers. You run them on your VPS. You find a provider who can provide them to you. Um, and they contain your accounts and your conversation history. The clients are very thin. As I said, it's just plain old HTTP talking back and forth here. And it's a very asymmetric protocol. The clients are really stupid and simple to write. Literally, it's a curl one-liner. The servers, on the other hand, are having to do this eventually consistent object database replication thing to go and uh, replicate the conversations all the way around the place. So they turn out to be quite hard, almost like a database implementation. Then you've got application services, which are like clients with super user access to the server. So they can masquerade users, they can masquerade rooms, they can act as bridges, they could act as um, you know, any kind of filtering or um, I don't know, logging or whatever service. And then finally, we have identity servers, which are kind of the odd one out because we haven't solved identity yet in Matrix. Um, what we do is to identify people based on their email address or their phone number or anything else and then we map it through to their matrix ID, which is intended to be opaque. At the moment, the, that lookup directory sits in these um, logically centralized services. We're hoping somebody's going to fix the problem of decentralized identity, and we'll just move over to using it when that happens. But until then, it's kind of the weak part of the architecture. Um, this is the fun bit um, in terms of where things are at today. Our main deliverable is the matrix spec, which is um, a increasingly scary single big document. And one of the things which we do differently to say XMPP or others is that we just have a spec. It's not a bunch of extensions. It's not a bunch of optional add-ons and chapters. It's one big document that gives you everything that you could want to do. It's got VoIP, it's got end-to-end -end encryption, it's got read receipts, typing notifications, all this um, sort of thing. And the advantage of having it all in one place and so if you have a server and you say, it speaks matrix 0.4, it does. You don't get the fragmentation. You don't get the, oh, I'm not sure whether my client's implemented end-to-end -end encryption yet, etc. If it's a compliant client, we have a baseline that defines precisely what you need to do to speak matrix. Historically, this has been quite um, unloved, shall we say, because... Uh, in practice, trying to get the right juggle between doing reference implementations and then making sure the spec is really, really good is a nightmare because it at least doubles the amount of work in order to um, also get consensus from the community that we're adding in a new feature into the spec and all of this kind of logistical thing. But the good news is that in the last couple of months, we've actually been working almost full time on the spec and it's got a lot, lot better. And so if you have ever had the misfortune of looking at the spec in the past and thought, wow, this is a bit shonky, um, now you can um, uh, look at it as of last night and see stuff hopefully looking a lot better. And I'll talk about it in a bit. On the implementation side, server side, we have a Python server called Synapse, which was the original prototype, and irritatingly, it's still the main one out there. Um, it sucks in many ways. It's a resource hog. We haven't optimized it as much as we would like. But in practice, it works well enough. Um, on the matrix.org server, we have about 30, 40,000 um, concurrent users at any given point. So it is possible to go and scale up to that sort of level, and that's over a couple of million accounts. And um, then we have Dendrite, which is the sexy next-gen server. Now, Dendrite's written in Go, and it uses for its own microservice architecture that goes and scales out completely horizontally. It shamelessly rips off how Hangouts works inside, and... Um, should, in theory, be amazing, other than the fact that we've had to t take people off it to focus on Synapse, because there are so many Synapses out there, and it's become quite mature um, that we need to keep supporting it, and it's been this classic second system syndrome, a bit like Netscape versus Mozilla or whatever back in the day, where eventually we will move over to Dendrite, and it's going to be incredible, but we keep, having, keep being delayed by keeping the current stuff propped up. That said, Synapse is usable um, today. It just uses more RAM than you would hope or expect. 
Um, we also have application services and bridges through to loads of different platforms, whether it's Slack or Gitter or Telegram or WhatsApp or iMessage or basically anything out there. Either we or the community have written a bridge. And the purple stuff is the community. The green stuff is um, the core team. On the client side, we give completely separate stacks on Android, iOS, and JavaScript. The lowest level is the web API wrapper. The next one up is the UX, UI components. And the one above that are applications themselves written on top of it. And the team also writes the Riot app, which is a kind of flagship app because one of the things we think went wrong in the past is uh, protocol, open protocols often don't have a flagship application. Like XMPP has never had until in some ways recently on Android you have conversations, but before then, especially cross-platform, there hasn't been the obvious XMPP client that everybody should be using. So on Atrix, we wanted to build one, and we called it Riot, and it sits on top. The cool thing about having totally native stacks um, here is that if you want to embed into Android or iOS or the web, you've got many, many different layers in which to go into it at, and you're not having to use React Native, you're not having to use some kind of device abstraction thing. Uh, the bad news is that for us, we end up doing triple the work that we should do in any sane world because we have to maintain completely separate code bases over all three platforms. Um, enough talking, let's actually look at it. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, so your, a microphone is winging its way to you on, uh, on angel wings. A question? Yeah, yeah sorry to interrupt. Uh, I didn't see anything about uh, embedded platforms, like microcontrollers and things. Is, is that just because it's straight HTTP and you don't really have to, or I don't know, do you have so, something to comment on that? So on the server side, um, it's not well suited um, to embedded platforms because the servers today are chunky. The next gen ones should be much better. Client side, you can absolutely use them on um, embedded platforms. And in fact, there's an ESP80 um, to whatever that processor is um, based platform. Um, uh, in Matrix, and it's like 20 lines of code, because luckily it has an HTTP client that works. And let's face it, most things have an HTTP client these days. So it's not perfect because it's HTTP, but it's certainly good enough to control Adafruit, some um, LEDs. I know a guy who has his entire house lit um, via Matrix, um, and, and that kind of thing. But it's more of the proof of concept phase. That's all right. Um, can you see this? This is my personal Riot um, web um, sitting in one of our um, dev rooms, um, Synapse Dev. Uh, it's worth noting that Matrix scales quite well. Um, I'm in like 1,400 different conversations here. Um, and uh, I don't know if I go into a room like Matrix HQ, that's got 1,600 people in it. At points, the rooms have gone up to 20, 30,000 people. So relative to something like Slack, we're just in a whole different order of magnitude of um, uh, scale and um, complexity. We have things like read receipts, oh, hello world, and uh, typing notifications, of course. Hopefully I have enough internet connectivity to send a message, and hopefully you'll see that people's faces start to Tetris grid down the right-hand side as they read my message. Why doesn't Slack have read receipts? Like, seriously, this is basic stuff here, and it's incredibly useful um, to you know, have this uh, uh, rich presence, effectively, of seeing precisely in, um, what's going on. Uh, what else can I show you in here? Um, bu -bu 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 um, oh, a good thing to do might be to actually look at one of these messages. So if you look at some foxes saying, hello, stream, you can always look at view source, and it shows you the underlying JSON. And here, it's pretty simple. Um, typically, it would just be plain text. Um, in here, he's also given HTML because I happen to know that he runs his own client, um, which presumably isn't doing the optimization to only send plain text if there isn't any formatting. And um, you get your timestamp, you get um, the room that it's in, and the type of message. And this is completely extensible. You can put any JSON you like as long as you namespace it to a given type into the room. So a slightly more interesting thing might be... I don't know, is there an image or something? Reality gaps asking to be heckled. This is very sad. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, this is very better, isn't it? I hope everybody appreciates the inception that's going on here. So if you look at this slide from the talk and um, uh, view source on this, then it's a lot more interesting. We've got a URL of an image here using the MXC URI schema, which is a decentralized content repository that we have in Matrix. It's very simple. It's just a full mesh of HTTP um, hits so that I can, qu uh, so that people basically sync over HTTP the message, um, uh, the, sorry, the media.
media of the message. And it works well enough. You have the metadata of the width and height and size and the MIME type, etc. cetera. Um, perhaps something more interesting would be an end-to-end -end encrypted room. If we go into something like Megom test, this room has got 193 people in it. And we use it for stress testing the end-to-end -end encryption because there are thousands of devices in the room. Typically, we see about 10 to 15 devices per, on average um, per user in Matrix. And um, if we go and look at one of these guys, the source itself has got the ciphertext in it. And, then you, and this is encrypted using MegOlm, which is a ratchet that is laid on top of Ohm, which is a clone of the double ratchet that Signal uses. So the way the encryption works is that you set up one-to-one -one ratchets um, between all of the participants in this room. So in this case, it's a full mesh over a thousand devices for the one-to-one -one ratchet. But then over that, you share the key data for the group ratchet called Megon. So you only need to send one copy of the message. It has one session, and hopefully everybody has synchronized their keys such that they can decrypt that particular um, message. So it's a kind of hybrid between signal and a slightly more pragmatic um, group ratchet-based approach. And I'm waffling and running out of time. Let me show you a different client. Let's um, go and look at another one. Um, so what, I've got one here called Neko, which I built last night, which is hopefully still going to work. Yep, yep, yep. Sure, it will be enlarged like woo, that. OK, so this is Neko starting from scratch. That's the entire thing booting up on a test account with like hundreds of um, uh, uh, conversations going on. It's written in Qt by the community, um, led by a guy called Mujex in um, um, Greece. And it is a fully native Qt app. It has end-to-end -end encryption in it, as of a few months ago. And it um, looks a lot like Telegram, as you can see. And it's just really nice. Um, I mean, obviously, I use Riot because I work on Riot. But um, an increasing number of people are now using this as a good um, native client. Um, also, excitingly, from my side, is um, Seaglass, which is a new client um, for Mac OS, which actually uses the um, iOS SDK um, let me just fire up a copy here, and I just have to build it. Oh, no, there we go. And Seaglass, yeah, is built on top of the iOS SDK, but otherwise it's a completely native um, Cocoa app. Um, GPL, all open source, of course. It's just logging in as um, the same user we were looking at in Neko. It's not quite as fast to load as the other one. All the logging flies past. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, is it running in the background? Oh, yeah, there it is. Perfect. So this is what Seaglass um, looks like. Actually, it's kind of similar to Neko, other than the fact that it's not QT. It's a com oh, we can confuse everybody and look at the Neko room from Seaglass, or we can go and look at the Seaglass room, which might make more sense. And uh, you can see it's um, a completely native Mac um, app. Looks really sexy on Mojave. Ooh. Um, or however you pronounce Mojave. Mojave, Mojave, I don't know, the, the dark theme that you get on the new Mac OS. Um, but it's really fun to see these really good um, clients coming to light. This one also does end-to-end -end encryption, um, thanks to piggybacking on the iOS SDK that we built for Riot. Um, all of these projects would love contributors, so if you are a Qt hacker or a Mac OS hacker or whatever environment hacker, go find a Matrix client of your choice and make it amazing. Um, meanwhile, Back on the slides, I've demoed it to you. What do you get? All the stuff you would expect and the kitchen sink. I don't think there's anything obvious missing, apart from reactions, which are coming real soon now. And I think there was something else. Or edit, editable messages. Both of them turn out to be harder than they should be. I'm going to skip how it works because I'm running out of time. The actual API looks like that. If the font is small, large enough for people to read, you're literally doing an HTTP post of some JSON to a URL like that. Um, you, if you're doing a WebRTC call, then again, it's a single HTTP hit to offer the media that you want to talk. And you basically offer, start the call, offer some media, the other guy answers it, and then you're in the call. So if you've ever had the mispleasure of doing SIP or VoIP by any other technology, this is basically the simplest possible approach you can use. Um, you can put some MIDI onto it. We did jamming over Matrix. It's not very good for the really low latency stuff like MIDI, but we recorded the jamming sessions into Matrix and notated it, which was fun. Um, bridges look like this. You've just got the bridge and the third party thing. So people might know the XKCD where Randall said, I have a hard time keeping track of which um, chat systems my friends use. And we literally drew 
the bridges that exist for the existing things on this intermatrix at the time. And we gave, give a node stack with a JS layer and the node in order to bridge through to IRC or Slack or anything that libpurple can speak. And so you end up having three nodes, the bridge in the way, or Slack, or like that. And that should say Slack, not IRC. Um, you can even do it to things like IoT devices. And this was a really fun demo until we broke the drone, where you would take the proprietary API that the drone spoke and took its video feed and took its telemetry and its uh, management, its actual fly-by-wire stuff, and put it into Matrix. So you could take a completely generic Matrix client, do a video call to the drone, and at then at that point, you literally would type launch and up and down and left and right, and the thing would fly around until it crashed into the audience. Um, what else do we have here? End-to-end -end encryption, I kind of glossed over that. Um, new stuff relatively are communities and widgets. Um, so communities um, allow us to filter these massive sets of rooms down to the ones you care about. So it's a bit like Slack teams or Discord servers. I'm now just looking at, one, at rooms which are to do with the core matrix team or, or I don't know, ones to do with GSOC or ones to do with GNOME or whatever it might happen to be. Um, also, widgets are really fun in that you can take um, any old room, I'm trying to think of a good room to demo in, uh, perhaps I'll just do one in Matrix HQ. So if you go into this, you basically have an app store of bots and bridges and things that you can add in. And a fun widget might be something, well, it could be any HTML page, it could be Spotify, it could be a YouTube, it could be Grafana, et cetera. Um, Jitsi is probably a good example, but if I actually press that button there, then it will go and embed a video conference as an HTML widget into the conversation. And for better or worse, everybody in Matrix HQ will suddenly see, hopefully, the conference pop up like that in, if their client supports widgets. And it's just a way of kind of coordinating iframes across the people, but it's surprisingly useful. Let's see if anybody joins us. I hope they don't. Um, it's surprisingly useful in terms of basically building a dashboarding system into any chat room. So if it was an ops room, imagine that you had like Grafana and you had, I don't know, some other dashboard in there. Oh, there is somebody else out there. Hello, whoever you are. It looks as if you're in your room, but this room based on the ceiling. <laughs> uh, we can go and try to crash the Jitsi and see um, what else it can do. Anyway, um, I'll kill that um, now, otherwise my laptop will probably run out of battery. Um, so that's an example of a widget, and I'm very nearly out of time. What else shall I say? Um, community status. Oh yeah, France has adopted Matrix a, on a kind of state level. Um, they've gone and rolled it out across 15 of their ministries now. They're aiming for 35 by September, end of September. They've written their own Matrix client, which is a very, very cute, um, kind of um, totally end-to-end -end encrypted um, approach for doing this. And they've also um, done a lot of interesting stuff with antivirus and the other enterprise stuff you would expect if you were a government running on top of Matrix. If you happen to work for a government here and you want to not be using Slack, Mr. GDS, then please come and talk to me afterwards because we'd love to help you out because it's a bit amusing that a UK-based project like Matrix has ended up being adopted by France but not the UK. Um, in terms of growth, over the last couple of years, users keep on going up. Yay! Um, traffic keeps on going up, other than the encrypted traffic, which has grown a lot more slowly because the UX sucks. Um, we're doing everything we can to fix the UX at the moment, and there's good stuff coming very shortly. Number of servers out there is actually now at about 5,500, um, so not quite as big as the web, but hopefully we're getting there, and the number keeps going up. Matrix 1.0, we've been in beta now for four years. We were trying to get a stable release of all APIs by the end of August. As of 3 a.m. this morning, we got all of them out apart from the Federation API. So this is a massive, massive win. Previously, it was just the CS API. Um, as I said, we've been doing lots of work on the spec. You can see that we first wrote the spec back in 2015, then it kind of trundled along, and then in the last couple of months, we've been right back at it to try to get it to a 1.0. Um, uh, the server to server stuff is nearly done. There's 26 issues left, nine in review. Um, lots of emphasis on security, but at that point, hopefully you all hear that Matrix is out of beta and we're finally you know, completely launched. All new Riot on the horizon, looking a lot less green, a lot more like Slack or Discord, hopefully a lot better. Um, also on mobile, looking like that. Um, lazy loading is gonna reduce RAM by a factor of five, which is nice. Um, we need to get end-to-end -end out of beta. Uh, we need to do other things which are missing, and we need help. Please run a matrix server. Please give us feedback. Follow us on Twitter, and thank you very much.
per perfect time, and thank you very much. Sorry um, for having to we rush. Can do, we can do a few questions, um, because I want to test this new tool. <laughs> So, can we turn? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, oh, amazing. Um, it's some kind of flying microphone. Yeah, this is really good. Um, Closer uh, to the mouth. Yeah. I was wondering about, uh, I was wondering about uh, uh, Git and or uh, Git and issue tracking integration, because I'm aware that I think GitLab are looking, starting to look at ActivityPub for that. And I was wondering whether, what the, yeah, what the capabilities of Matrix in that space were and where, what, what's planned. Our capability is kick ass when it comes to um, issue tracking integration. So if I go into an internal room like this one, where everybody's getting excited about the spec releases, I do slash uh, exclamation mark GitHub create um, hello world, then it will go and log in with my actual GitHub credentials into GitHub and create that issue um, on the default project, which happens to be Riot Web as me as my actual thing. And likewise, you can go and webhook everything in from GitHub too. Um, so we live by it. And it's not just GitHub, it's got Bitbucket and all sorts of other things too. If, if, we, keep, if we keep it short, uh, we can to, do two more okay. and then we move it outside for further follow-ups yep. and Grab stuff like that. Grab me afterwards too. Have you got any news about the key verification UI change? Yes, here? absolutely. So I completely skimmed over that slide, um, but it was one of, I think it was even the top thing of exiting uh, a beta for end-to-end -end encryption. First of all, you got incremental key backups, which uh, the PRs have almost landed, which um, makes it a lot harder to lose your keys. Then the new verification, we've got QR codes and comparing mnemonics. Both of them are fully designed, fully specced. We have a UX workshop on Monday to actually lock down what it looks like, and then we're going to implement it before we go mad. I'm sorry that it sucks for so long, but we're going to fix it. So and then the, finally, the, the, so, the short question part works already. The sorry. short answer part we work on. Last question, please. Yeah, yeah thank you very much for the talk. Um, I was wondering if you could uh, tell us your thoughts on machine to machine communication through Matrix. Uh, we want somebody to do it. We haven't been focused on it. It could be used very much for that. HTTP isn't great for it. Better transports would be amazing. Please do an MQTT transport or a co-app transport. Um, also, it helps if you need the encryption, because otherwise it might be simpler to just use MQTT. But if you need federation or encryption, then use us. Awesome. Thank you very much. Please give another warm round of applause for Matthew.